Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants and this is my indoor nursery. Today I'm going to teach you how to grow Pingwicula Aphrodite, a very beautiful and stunning hybridized species that is very easy to grow. Please check out the description to find uh, timestamps to all the different sections of this video so you can find the information you need and get in and get out. You can also uh, find a link to my nursery where you can buy a beautiful plant like this from me directly and a link to my discord where you can hop in, ask me any questions you need, show off your plants, or even have a live voice chat with me and I can hop, hop down here in the nursery we can show each other off, well show off each other's plants to each other. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoy. The first and most important point to cultivating any carnivorous plant is climate. You need to provide a stable climate for long-term success. This includes temperature, humidity, and airflow. To maintain a stable climate of 40 to 80% humidity, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and steady airflow, I suggest the following. Use a humidifier near your grow area to maintain humidity. Bags, clear plastic cups, and humidity domes work, but these options are a poor replacement for ambient humidity. Bags and plastic cups in particular can amplify the sun and roast plants with high sun exposure if grown on a windowsill. Use a space heater or air conditioner to keep your temperature between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Going too far out of this temperature range can cause stress to the immune systems of the plants and lead to more fungal and pest infections. To measure your grow area's climate, I highly recommend purchasing a thermometer or humidity gauge like this one. There's a link in the description to buy one from Amazon. The next important point to cultivating carnivorous plants is lighting. The sun is the best light you can have for your plants. Since most homes do not have windowsills that provide enough light, indoor growers are left to using indoor LED grow lights. Here you can see that I use an array of different fixtures. No matter what kind of lights you use, make sure to drape the cords before going to your outlet to prevent water-related electrical fires. An appropriately rated timer for your lights is critical to the long-term health of your plants. As a quick overview, lighting sources should be four to six inches away from most species of carnivorous plants. I recommend Yescom 225 lights as they cost around $30 off Amazon and work great for smaller collections. You can use four foot LED shop lights from most big box stores as well. I have a link in the description to the red blue sun coat lights that I use for some of my racks. Make sure that you provide at least 12 hours of direct light to your plants a day. Going under this amount can stress certain tropical plants. Like climate shifts, this can lead to decreased immune function. Even plants like to sleep and some like Biblis only digest prey at night. As a safety tip, make sure you drape your cords and have a low spot to prevent water related electrical fires. If you are growing your plants outside or on a window, use the species specific lighting preference later in this video as a guide to how much exposure the plant should receive. I grow Pingwicula in a medium that consists of one part silica sand, one part perlite, and one part vermiculite. You can find these at most big box stores and they make a very awesome and fast draining soil for Pingwicula. Next up, water. First thing you need is a TDS meter like this. It'll measure the total dissolved solids in your water. You need water with under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids for carnivorous plants. Here you can see my tap water comes in at around 100 parts per million. Next, my reverse osmosis filtered water clocks in at 12 parts per million. To water, I use the tray method, watering from the bottom of the pot. I fill these trays one to two inches up the pot and refill the trays once the tray is dry, but before the medium dries. For a quick overview, make sure to have a TDS meter and only use water under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids. Tap water is usually unusable, so make sure to test it before use. Distilled water from a grocery store, pharmacy, or other store will work. Nursery water will also work. Water from an air conditioner or dehumidifier can be used, but is not recommended for the long term. Use the tray method of watering. Make sure the water is at least one inch from the bottom of the pot. If the soil dries, the plant dies. Top water all plants except Pingwicula and some small rosetta Drosera every two months to prevent mineral buildup, promote oxygen exchange, and prevent most fungal growth. Lastly, to fertilize or feed carnivorous plants, I use Maxi 161616 fertilizer and apply it as a foliar feed. 
You can mix a small amount with water and use an eyedropper or pipette, but I prefer to use a mixing bottle. I'll take small amounts on a plant tag and shake vigorously to mix. To be accurate, the mixture clocks in around 100 parts per million. I miss the plant's foliage thoroughly for about 30 minutes before the lights go off every two weeks. Make sure to spray at an angle perpendicular to the pot to prevent excess fertilizer. This can cause algae growth that can be easily scraped away. Utricularia can be fed by spraying the topsoil, but back off if you see algae mats forming. Pinguicula aphrodite. A very beautiful and stunning hybrid. Well, I think it's a cultivar, technically. But, either way, still stunning, beautiful. Get the very striking pink on the edges. And the gl digestive glands on it give a very beautiful shimmer in person. This picture is definitely not doing this specimen any justice. I would say that this is an easy pink. But it's definitely not as easy as some of the hybrids that... I've made videos for it is very easy to grow and if you give it a good uh, ping mix like I recommend you should see very quick and easy growth with the species <laughs> To clone pinwicula, you want to just take a leaf preferably one lower down and pull straight out as you can see here on this first one, my hand kind of slips and I end up tearing it a little bit. That's okay. The white bit on the very end closest to where it was in the center is what we're looking for. And you can go ahead and get two. I like to use these little condiment cups. You can find them at most grocery stores. And they're typically pretty cheap. Go ahead, put a lid, make sure you uh, mark it. In a, about a month, you'll see little plantlets form at the end. And you can go ahead and remove them out place them on top of soil just like you would a mother plant and they'll just start growing nice and happy for you it's a pretty quick and simple process thank you for watching this far i have links in the description to other great reference videos done by other nursery owners for the international carnivorous plant society these include a pesticide discussion from damon of california carnivores and a lighting presentation from drew of carnivoro there's also a link to barry rice's carnivorous plant faq which has been invaluable to my own learning once again, if you want to try growing carnivorous plants or expand your collection, check out my website. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more carnivorous plant content. I wish you happy growing and great success. Thanks again.